getting back to my MC status. Marcus Chapman. MC. What's happening? It's Marcus Chapman, aka MC Marcus Chapman, when it comes to radio. Uh, I want to do a special video because uh, I've been making a lot of appearances on TV One's Unsung over the past uh, almost two years now, uh, especially 2016 and this year in 2017. So I wanted to do something because I get a lot of people asking me, like, how did you end up on Unsung? How did you become a music historian? What is a music historian? How can I get on Unsung? What do I need to do? Well, so this is kind of a tutorial, so to speak, to give you an example of how I got to this point and where I'm going beyond that. All right? Now, first of all, as you can see behind me, there's a lot of vinyl. Okay, I've been collecting records since I was like four years old. So the vinyl is you know definitely part of it but a lot of people have vinyl that's that's not something anything special necessarily and how did i get the vinyl in the first place i mean i'm not really all that old of a guy <laughs> although i'm older than a lot of folks think but how did that even happen and how do you do music research and all this stuff so i'm gonna give you some examples of how we got to that point all right first of all one of the first things i did after i started collecting vinyl when i was like a teenager when I finally got to college, you remember how like everybody had the Jet magazines? Remember Jet magazine used to have like the little charts in the back with the top songs and the top albums? Well, I remember uh, when I was a teenager, we started getting a subscription to Jet about 1986, I believe it was. And uh, I used to look at those charts all the time. But I always wondered what the charts looked like years previous to that, you know, in the 70s and 60s and everything. So when I got to college, my second semester, I actually went to the library on my campus. I went to Northern Illinois University. I'm from Chicago, so uh, the uh, campus is about, about an hour and a half away from Chicago. And I went to the library one day and I happened to notice that they had all these old Jet magazines. So I ended up going through every Jet magazine. I went to look at the charts. But what ended up happening, I actually started reading the articles, too. So I was looking at the charts, and, then, and back then they used to do a lot of articles about, you know, musicians and, and actors and, and all these different cultural things that were happening, you know, that maybe people didn't necessarily think were, you know, out of the norm at the time, but it, they were big deals. Like, I remember one that said... Uh, uh, Red Fox starts new show on TV and of course it was Sanford and Son and so I ended up reading all of these different articles it was probably the most cultural thing I ever did I'm talking about everything from like late 60s all the way up to about 1985 86 which is you know where I knew the magazine from up to that point uh, and that kind of got me started you know, getting that info in terms of who had the hot songs, who had the hot albums, and that helped me in collecting. But the next semester, I went to the music library on my campus, and they had Billboard magazine. Now, Billboard has been the pretty much the standard chart that the music industry has gone by for many years. But that's not a magazine that you normally saw just in a neighborhood store. <laughs> you know, like you didn't just go to the store and pick up Billboard magazine. You might see it at a record store in a mall at a certain point up on the wall. But that was it. But Billboard magazine every year they publish a year end chart. You know, hottest songs and albums for every chart they do. It's not just one Billboard chart, by the way, if you're not familiar. They basically have one for pretty much every genre. You got the Hot 100, which is the pop chart. You got the R&B chart. You got jazz. You got all these different country and everything. So what I did is I went to the music library and I started jotting down the information from the year-end charts. Matter of fact, I still have those charts, so we're going to take a look at some of them. All right, so this beat-up folder here says Marcus Chapman R&B Data, all right? This is from all way back in 1991. So these are the charts that I wrote down when I was in college, all right? This, you see Top Hits of 1970. So, was, so these were all the top, the top song of that year, I'll Be There by the Jackson 5. And you got all the here. We're here, the top 25, so these are the top 50. Now, if you notice, these check marks next to each one. I started using these charts as checklists for collecting the records. So these are the ones that I have, or in some cases had, because I started selling stuff after a while. Uh, I actually found this one recently. I uh, didn't see this at the time. Top R&B album in 1970. I have most of these. Didn't check them off, though. I got to get back to that. <laughs> so we got all these 71. 
72, 73, you got all of this information here that I go back to from time to time, you know, not necessarily for collecting because I don't do as much collecting now, but all of this info can come in handy. And this is chart research. I started this when I was like 17 years old or something. All right. So you got all the way, you got 86. Those are all the ones that I wrote down. And then I started just making copies of them. Okay. So you top black singles, 1987, Luther Vandross, Stop to Love. Top artist, Freddie Jackson. Okay. Top album, Freddie Jackson, just like the first time. Okay. And you go all the way through the 90s. You got my boy Jodeci in 92. You got Snoop Dogg, 94. Uh, Kelly. And then... When we get to this point, by this point, in 1995, I started working in professional radio. And the station I was working at in Chicago was WGCI, and they would always do a top hits of the year countdown. So this is actually the top hits of 1995 countdown. So you see, you know, we, they, they used to do 107 hits. So it went all the way down, they did these live on the air, and I made copies of what we call the music log. Uh, these were the songs that were programmed for that day. So, see, all of these were the top hits of 1995. Same thing for 96. Then also still got some Billboard stuff, 97, all the way through, okay? Even got some later ones in here from, like, uh, when I started working at the station again years later. We got, uh, well, that's 1998 right there. These are from, like, 2006. So, all of this little information... I don't necessarily sit around looking at it, but it's part of a library. This is like my library. I can go back to different stuff. And then at one point, I went back to the music library. And actually, I got these from the regular library in Chicago, where I went back and I started looking at the pop charts. I did that like in the 90s, because initially, I was mainly just looking at black artists, R&B and stuff. But then I started going back, researching the pop charts. So you got... 71, you got Neil Young, 72, these are the top albums. War, which was actually a black band with one Danish guy, Lee Oscar, they actually had the top album of 73 for pop, though Al Green ended up with it for R&B. So I, I ended up kind of being, uh, it started to become more of a well-rounded historian instead of just black music, even though that was always the focus initially but I can get you on the pop stuff too. All right, and then I also went back and got jazz. I'm a 70s jazz cat, so you got, this is all the stuff, top jazz albums of each one of these years. Donald Byrd, Blackbird, 1973. You see all these check marks, because I got all these albums. I love these cats. Stanley Turrentine, Roe Washington Jr., all that. All of that's the jazz info, and I kind of stopped with jazz around 1980, because like I said, I love 70s jazz most. So all of that data goes in this folder. However, if you are a true historian, there's one book in particular you have to have. This is one of the uh, Joel Whitburn. So he says, Joel Whitburn presents how to R&B songs. Joel Whitburn is a music research. He has a research team. And what they did was they put a lot of that info that I just showed you into books but these were like not year-end charts these were like the charts for like all the time and they compiled all this data and you can look up different stuff from each group so you got guy these were all the chart hits they had you see the dates and the chart positions the weeks on the chart which is very important and how they crossed over as well so all of this there's a book like this for r&b there's one for pop there's one for r&b albums so these books come in handy, and if, say, like, if I know what a song is, but I, I don't know what the artist, if I couldn't remember who it's by, they had an index where you can go by the song instead and look up who the artist is, whatever the song title is. Now, and speaking of books, uh, I do collect books and read a whole lot of different music books, all right? You see a lot of these was those year and music books to the left. Those are really good. Um... I read a lot of autobiographies and biographies of a lot of different artists. You got Shaka Khan in there, Teddy Pendergrass, Michael Jackson, Fred Wesley from the JBs, a book about Prince, Temptations, Philly Soul. Uh, it's all types of stuff in here. And these come in really handy when it comes to getting like inside information about the songs, the albums, and the artists. A lot of times I'll end up dropping little tidbits on unsung that come directly from me going through some of these books 
So, and some of the books are also about genres as well, as opposed to just particular artists. And right here, these are some that I read recently. You got uh, Maurice White from Earth, Wind & Fire. He completed his biography just before he passed away. Rick James, two books on him, kind of two different versions of the same book, actually. Uh, you got George Clinton, the book somebody wrote about him, and his autobiography as well. Over here. Yeah, you can point. Okay. Up here, these books are also part of the collection. Now, these two right here are really valuable. I like these. Touch of Classic Soul. Volume 1 is early 70s, Volume 2 is late 70s, and, and they're like different write-ups about the artists from that era. A guy named Mark Taylor did these. He's, I believe he's out of New York. And so like, you got the dramatics, so a lot of good info on them in here. Basically, he did interviews with different people in most of these groups in, in a lot of cases. So these are really good books to have. But the book that I would say started the whole thing off for me is this one. This, The Death of Rhythm and Blues by Nelson George. Nelson George, for me, is the person who I look at as the model for music historians from a black perspective. He, I'm like a younger version of Nelson George. And this particular book here was so powerful. I remember I read it when I was in college and when I finished, I couldn't put it. Once I put it down, I couldn't pick it back up for like three days. It just totally changed my whole understanding of the music industry over the years so I would definitely recommend this this he's done more books but this is the one he's still the most famous for it came out in like late 1988 I believe I remember hearing an interview that he did about it at the time and I read it years later in terms of an artist book this is probably the best one ever done that I know of Divided Soul Life of Marvin Gaye by David Ritz they originally were working on this as a, an autobiography a collaboration but then they kind of fell out, and then Marvin passed, and then David Ritz went ahead and finished it. But this has got to be the best uh, book about a particular artist that I've ever read, definitely. And I highly recommend this, if, especially if you're a Marvin Gaye fan, you should have read it already. <laughs> then we have the books that I did. Whose music book ever made, aka the MC500. Volume 1 and Volume 2, short write-ups about 500 different songs by various artists and from various genres over the years. This is the one that actually the people from Unsung were able to go through, and that's how they found out that uh, I knew what I was talking about. I wasn't just some dude trying to get on TV, although I think Volume 2 is even better and more improved. I will have to give props to a different book, though. It's actually in here. This is actually the book, the first book that I got that I started doing music research. The Billboard book of number one R&B hits, rhythm and blues hits by uh, Adam White and Fred Bronson. So I got it. If you see, notice I put 1994 because that's when I got it. I remember I was in the, the library. At, it's, no, it's a bookstore on campus. And I saw this book and I just sat there reading it for hours. I was like, I got to get this. So it's like write ups about every song that reached number one in the Billboard R&B chart from like 1965 through 1990. That was where they had ended up stopping it. And this is definitely a lot of valuable information. As a matter of fact, I modeled my books after this one. Now, they did some other ones on pop and, you know, a couple of other genres. But this is the one that I would say really kind of stands out to me and that I use to model my own projects after this one. Still get a lot of, a lot of times when we do Unsung, if it's an artist that, that they pro say like when we did Johnny Taylor, that was the first one that uh, I filmed. Lakeside was the first one that aired. We filmed those both on the same day. But like when we did Johnny Taylor, what I did was I went in here and uh, figured out which ones, I already kind of knew, but I went through the index and picked out, okay, well, which ones Johnny Taylor were number one. So then I found the Johnny Taylor ones, and I was able to go through and read, well, reread, because I read all this stuff already, but it kind of helps me refresh my memory 
and I was able to go through and get some interesting info on Disco Lady and some of the other hits that he had and some of those clips got used in episodes. Another thing that I have in my library, this is stuff that I taped off TV over the years. Now, back when, and a lot of you all may remember when MTV and VH1 and BT, they used to be real music channels and they showed a lot of really good music stuff. Well, I recorded a lot of those different documentaries and programs. So I've been actually converting a lot of this stuff from VHS tapes to DVDs over the past couple of years. But a lot of times I'll go back to some of these documentaries and I'll rewatch them to refresh my memory on different little tidbits that I can use in the episodes. All right, so it's over a hundred something tapes in here. You know, some of them I don't really mess with, but some of them I do and it's like random stuff on them. <laughs> you know, I didn't necessarily record things on TV in any kind of order. So it could be comedy specials on here. It could be, you know, music documentaries, sports, Chris Rock shows, I mean, it's all types of stuff, but I can go back and get different information from a lot of these documentaries, and then that helps me, you know, when I'm doing episodes. Another thing, this is more uh, footage. These are like uh, concerts, mainly. Some documentaries mixed in, but this is like a collection of my rare concert footage. I love rare concert footage. You see a lot of that on Unsung. They use different footage from Don Kirshner's rock concert or Soul Train. And I have a lot of different clips of different folks from when they were in their prime. You know, when they were young, actually making the songs that we know them for. Got all my R&B and funk people in here. And then got my rock folks in here, you know, comedy specials over there. And then also another thing I'll go to sometimes. I got all the old Vibe magazines from the 90s. So like this whole box set, this is the very first Vibe magazine from 1992. And then the first official release, because this was like, a, like it's kind of a test run. Then this was the first official release with Snoop on the cover. And that whole box, and sometimes I'll go through and I'll pull out different articles on artists that and talk about stuff from the episodes. So say like this one right here. Let me get this one out. This Jad and Jackson episode. See the SWV, not NWA. I went back and I reread that article and something that I read, I was actually talking about in the SWV episode when they were talking about their last album that they did before they broke up. How, you know, they weren't really happy with it. It was too much hip hop, blah, blah, blah. So a lot of that was in here along with my own experiences because I was working in radio at that time. So all of this stuff can come in handy. Also, in addition to the vinyl and all of that stuff, you know, got the CDs, you know, 90s or 2000 CDs was popping. So still got my whole CD collection. I know a lot of y'all doing all the streaming and everything. They made all that stuff up for folks who, you know, get access to more stuff. But a lot of that I still have from the original. Say like they did Dave Hollis episode for Black Street. Got the uh, promotional sticker on there. <laughs> All right, so got CD singles in here and everything, and then over here, all of this is R&B and funk and rock and everything. Then got my hip hop section, so I use a lot of this stuff as well when we doing episodes. I go back and I, I always go back and I listen to the artists that I'm doing. So say like, got my SWVs right here, all right, got the remixes, see, and then this was I had actually made this myself back in 2000, my own best of SWV. This is the best SWV compilation you'll ever see, by the way. <laughs> so you might want to screenshot that or something. Put up, put your own version together. Although mine's got the no rap version of Lose My Cool that they sent to the radio station without Red Man's verse on it. It actually sounds good. That's pretty much the whole process in a nutshell of me getting qualified to be on Unsung. So if you're willing to put in that work of all these years of music research and, and collecting and all of those things, maybe you too can do what I'm doing. But as you see, it's not just a simple process, all right? Being a music historian, I'm an author, I do radio, radio personality for a long time, and uh, you should be seeing me on TV some more, too. Hopefully, you've got some things that work trying to make happen, and we're going to keep everything moving, and, of course, you should be seeing me in some more unsung and unsung Hollywood episodes as well. So thanks for watching this uh, beautiful program here, and I will catch you sometime soon. I'm Marcus Chapman. And thanks for watching.